Yo, what's going on guys? I am Mike from Mobox and we're back 30 minutes later after I just recorded this entire tutorial and forgot to actually hit record because I haven't made a tutorial in so long. I know it's been a while. We're back. We're doing another abstract artwork in After Effects, which by the way is sponsored by Skillshare. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. Here we are in After Effects and this is the one that I just recorded. So this is pretty much what we'll be creating. So um, anyways, let's just go ahead and create a new composition, composition new and 2000 by 2000, 30 frames a second. Um, I have this set to 300 frames, so that's 10 seconds long, and I'm just gonna hit okay. So first thing, I'm just gonna create a layer new solid and set up black background, just hit okay. I'm just gonna rename this to background and then lock that layer. Next up, I'm going to add a star. So if you hold shift while you make the star, it will kind of keep it proportionally correct and I'm just going to center it up in our composition using the align tool, Windows align, if you don't have that, it's super useful. Okay, so this star, I'm gonna make actually white. Actually, I don't really think that, that was very important. What is important is I'm gonna open up the poly star and I'm gonna set the poly star path to 12. And then I'm gonna re, I'm gonna kind of reposition this anchor point because you could see here that it, it moved. It's not no longer in the center. I'm just gonna hit Y on the keyboard, move it in the center and then uh, realign this star. The reason why I did that is 360 degrees is one rotation and that's divisible by 12. So it's a lot easier to sort of loop this and change the speed without massively adjusting the speed. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm just gonna hit R on the keyboard, set a keyframe for rotation, come down to like, I don't know, like 90 seconds, that's three seconds long. That's kind of a good length for a looped abstract piece of artwork. So I'm gonna set this to like 90 degrees and you can see here that it doesn't look like it moved. So actually I think that's a little slow. So I'm gonna bump that up to like 180. It might look fast, but once we like throw the 50 effects that we're putting on here, you honestly won't even notice. So I'm just gonna hit Alt, hit the stopwatch and type in loop out with a capital O. If you don't do capital O, it will not work. I guess quotation marks, that's what they're called, I think. And then I'm gonna hit continue. So what this does is this will now loop on forever. So I can make this comp 20 years long and Theoretically, it would it would loop. So um, I haven't tested that, but I think that that's what it would do. So I'm just gonna add an effect called um, fractal noise. What's really great about fractal noise is they give they give you the ability in here under the evolution options to cycle the noise, which it sounds super rudimentary, but honestly, it allows you to loop noise, which the other noise options don't allow you to do, which makes this unique and interesting. Obviously, it doesn't loop with our shape we can pre-comp this and you can get a different look that way i just kind of don't really like pre-comping stuff all the time so i'm just going to be lazy and hit alt on the evolution stopwatch i'm just going to say negative and i'm going to pick whip the rotation and then i'm going to divide this by 180. actually i'm going to multiply it by 360 and divide it by 180. so what that does is it says you know when this is 180 this is going to be negative one so if it end on the keyboard, move it over just one more and right click and trim comp to work area. This should now loop because it ends at one. Um, and this cycle evolution is set to one. So one loop equals one cycle. And that looks pretty cool. So now I have to open up my uh, guide here, which I always make these guides. Let me know if you actually want those. I could post them on Patreon. I usually make the tutorial and then I have to give myself guides but I always put all the important information on the right and it's on my second monitor, which makes it actually hard to read without turning my head, which makes the audio then weird. But any, anyways, not important. Let's adjust this fractal noise. And I don't know, these are just coming off the top of my head. I don't know, 940 and negative 50. These things just, just come to me sometimes. And I'm gonna change the settings to turbulent smooth and linear. That looks like super contrasty. We'll, we'll, we'll come back here and maybe adjust this. Maybe we won't, I don't know, we'll see. Um, depending on, on how the, the next effects look. Before we move on to the next part, I just wanna tell you a little bit about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses on pretty much everything from productivity to filmmaking. In my humble opinion, I really do believe that this is the future of learning. It's super easy to find high quality courses from highly qualified instructors to get started on learning something new, which by the way, is extremely useful if I wanna continue learning 3D design in Blender. I've really been enjoying this course by Remington Markham, which guides you through producing 3D animations in Blender. 
I've always been a fan of his work, so this was the perfect course to get me started on my journey. The reason why I love Skillshare is it's just more curated. It's more worth your time. Also, it's very affordable compared to other avenues of learning, especially college. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, which is actually totally crazy if you know how much traditional education is. So with that said, I've teamed up with them to offer a free trial of premium membership to the first 1,000 of you who use the link down in the description. This really is the future of learning and I am really excited to help you get started on this journey. Anyways, back to the video. So I'm gonna create a layer, new adjustment layer. And this is the first of multiple adjustment layers we'll be adding. But an effect I'm gonna add to this is turbulent uh, displacement. Turbulent noise is another noise alternative that does not allow you to loop. So if you're using that and you wanna loop, switch over to fractal noise. Okay, so for turbulent displace, I'm gonna crank these up to like, like I don't know, like 950. Whoa, not that one. Uh, the amount to 950 and the size to like 10. We'll adjust this later as well, not a big deal. Nothing really to, to worry about. The effect that gives this everything that it that it is, um, is called CC Light Burst 2.5, uh, 1.0, you know, 1.5, 1.6, we're at 2.5. <laughs> I'm like really hyper, I had like so much coffee today. So the center of this 1000 by 1000, that looks perfect. Um, the ray length 50, that's pretty good. We could change it to 60. It all kind of depends on how big your shape is. So if I scaled my shape down, I might want um, longer bursts, for example. Up to you, live your life, do what you want. And I'm now just gonna add a tint effect to this. And I do have colors already chosen um, and I do have hex codes for them as well. So one, the first, the background, uh, what I wanna map the black to is gonna be like sort of a really dark purple. The hex code is 01010B. And then the white color is sort of a teal slash mint color, which the hex code is 1CF. 1A3. So that looks pretty cool. You can now jump into your shape layer and adjust kind of the contrast. If you want it to look a little bit more contrasty, you could bring the brightness down even more. It is really slow, I'm gonna be honest. So if you kind of have a slow computer, this might not be the best thing for you. But if you also do 3D work, then you know that everything takes forever to render anyway. So what's the difference? So now I'm gonna add a little bit more dynamicism to the center. This, I mean, it's kind of cool, it's, it's two-tone, you know, that's really popular. But I do think that if I add an ellipse here, holding shift to make sure it's perfectly circular, put this in the center, add a fast blur to it. Um, I'm just gonna increase the blur radius. Um, I don't know, like to 20, it doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. And I'm just gonna set the blending mode to screen. Depending on the different color combinations you use, you might actually wanna set this, um, set the mode to overlay or add or or something else. But I'm gonna set the color to like a pinkish color. And I'm gonna increase the blur amount to like 80. I think that that looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll set this down to like 60 and then expand it. Now I'm just gonna add one more. Keep going back and forth on this. I'm just gonna add one more layer, new adjustment layer, and this is sort of the final one. I'm gonna name that, that layer tint, and just rename my shape layer to star. And on this adjustment layer, I'm gonna, this is something that I've sort of become a fan of doing, is that a color balance, HLS color balance. And so I could sort of toggle through, let's bring the resolution down. I sort of like to toggle through the colors because you might come across a combo that you're like, hey, wow, I actually really like that color and it wasn't really something that I had in mind. Um, one color combo that I did like was this sort of reddish pinkish color, but I didn't really love the center color. So instead I changed this to, I think add, and then changed this color to sort of like an orange color. And then brought down the opacity a little bit. And I thought that that looked pretty cool. Um, so for this one, we'll run with that. It's the one I did on this as well. Um, another effect, actually I forgot to add, is lens. So I can just add that here. I'm just gonna ex expand this a bit. Oh my God, it's so slow. I know I just sounded like I was from Miz M Missouri or something, but I'm not. Um, why is, what? Um, 
uh, why do I not know how to use the lens tool all of a sudden? Um, okay, maybe my star's not big enough. There you go. Just had to increase the size of the star. All right, so I think that that looks pretty cool. I think it's spinning like way too fast. It's like too exotic for me. What's really great about this is I could set this down to like 90. I do have to come in here and and change my evolution to now be 90. I could add that. I could just make this a slider, I guess. So now it'll loop properly. So I think that looks pretty cool. Um, now there's just a bunch of other things that you could add just to kind of make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, Erica of Anderson, obviously a massive inspiration. Go check her out on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I'll link her in the description. Um, she kind of kicked me off to doing a, a couple different things. One is adding a noise. And I usually set mine to around eight. Twitter and Instagram will absolutely destroy that. YouTube will as well. You probably won't even be able to see this unless I zoom in like really far. So anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you would like to download this file on, pro on Patreon, please um, do so. It's at the $5 level and you get access to like hundreds of our other files. And um, check out Skillshare, link in the description. Highly recommended. Um, it's a great resource to learn um, different, different programs. I've been trying to learn Blender and it's really been a, a massive help. So um, anyways, if you want to download this again, Patreon, mint it as an, as an NFT. Uh, it's not really in the, le in the uh, legal kind of rights um, that you have on Patreon and in the, in, the, in the license that I provide you. But um, if you do, I'm sure you'll make a lot of money on something like this. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching.